all have reason to cheer in unison with this excited throng. For here is a sign of a healthy America, of a nation of people that can thrill to the exploits, of fleetness and sinew and perfect timing. Not alone in the field of sport, but on the field of duty, health is a vital factor. It is the bone and brawn behind the great fleets which guard our ocean. You say the machines do the work. But what is the power that guides them? Healthy American workmen. Yes, health is the backbone of industry. And industry is the sturdy bulwark of our way of life. At play, at duty, at work. A healthy America is a strong America. Yet, some of our leading nutrition authorities tell us that in this nation, 40% of the men, women, and children are improperly fed and undernourished. You ask, is there a practical remedy for this appalling condition? You bet there is. Health and vitality are hidden in the foods we eat. That doesn't sound very much like a secret, does it? But there's a lot more to it than you'd think. Yes, there really is a secret. And to learn that secret, laboratories like this were erected where men search for the mysterious health-building elements essential to life. Unsung heroes, working with tireless persistence, have discovered the vital influence of vitamins and minerals in our health. These discoveries have a far-reaching effect on our daily lives. Perhaps their importance will be better understood if it is told by one of these men of research, one of this great army of V-men. Want to know something about vitamins? Well, nearly everyone does, quite properly, too. I think perhaps a simple example may help you to understand them better. There at the dock, a ship is unloading a valuable import. When we speak of imports, we think of import duties. Now, this particular cargo is fish liver oil, tuna liver oil, and halibut liver oil. Now, here's a sample of each. The amazing and important fact is that the import duty on these oils is not figured on gallons, but on vitamin content. That means on nutritive value and not on bulk. This very effective comparison should be applied to the food you eat. Its value to your health should not be figured simply by quantity, but by its vitamin and mineral content. Nearly everyone knows there are many varieties of vitamins. There are some we're just beginning to know something about, and others are just being discovered. But as a group, vitamins are essential for complete health, and each one individually is important. Let us take vitamin A first, as it's found in vegetables. I imagine you'd like to see how it looks under a microscope. Medical authorities say that the average person requires about 5,000 international units of vitamin A each day. <laughs> a lot? Yes, but you could put it all on the head of a pin. Now, the vitamin you have just seen, A, is one of the essentials of good vision. For instance, it guards against the hazards of night driving by reducing glare blindness, and it helps the body guard against colds. Another vitamin, is vitamin B1, known as thiamine. Vitamin B1 is essential for properly converting starches and sugar into energy, for normal appetite, proper digestion, and healthy nerves. A great percentage of people are deficient in this vitamin. Another member of the B complex is vitamin B2, known as G and riboflavin. This vitamin is especially important for normal growth and it helps keep the skin in good condition, particularly around the mouth. And it is also essential for healthy eyes. Vitamin C, ascorbic acid, is essential for the normal health of blood vessels, and it helps keep your teeth and gums sound. Number five, among the commonly known vitamins, is nicotinic acid, often called the pellagra preventative vitamin and therefore designated PP. And by the way, it is not related to the nicotine of tobacco. This vitamin is an important factor in keeping the digestion 
and the nervous system functioning properly. And it also helps maintain normal smoothness of skin. Nature has provided all of these vitamins in a wide variety of foods, common everyday foods that are available to everyone. Yes, common everyday foods are the best natural source of vitamins. And men of research, the V-men, are performing a service to mankind by adding daily to the knowledge of this important vital subject. But eating three full meals a day, every day, is no guarantee that you have your full quota of these essential food elements. The vitamin content stored by nature in our foods may never reach the dining room table because vitamins are easily destroyed and lost. Take Mrs. Smith, for example. She is careful to select proper and balanced foods for her family's dinner. And yet, 12 short feet from the dining room table, she may lose many of the precious vitamins. You wonder how this is possible. Well, there are common practices in the preparation and cooking of food which needlessly destroy these vital ingredients. Continuous high heat, which results in violent boiling, is a practice through which some of the precious vitamins are destroyed. Exposure to air is still another. Mrs. Smith loses vital ingredients by stirring air into the food and by cooking in uncovered pans. Another example is the use of too much water. Excessive cooking water drained off is very rich in vitamins. Actually, there is no reason why Mrs. Smith or anyone whose job it is to guard the ingredients nature has provided in food should needlessly lose them. There is a wealth of information on vitamin preservation in the cooking of food being published by recognized authorities on nutrition, biochemistry, medicine, by federal agencies, by colleges and universities. These authorities are the men and women of science, ever charting new channels to help. I think we're ready to discuss the assignment from Westinghouse Electric and Manufacturing Company. From our preliminary thinking on the subject, I believe we're going to enjoy the work. Yes, it has an intriguing quality. Testing to determine the vitamin and mineral retention resulting from two methods of cooking. Well, we've had a while to think about it. We might go over the subject to see if we're all in accord. It occurred to me that we could distinguish the two methods of cooking by labeling the old-fashioned method destructive cooking. The modern method might be called protective cooking. Or vitamized cooking. Uh, that's descriptive enough. Suppose you chart them. The three factors common to both methods are water, heat, air. Andrews, how would you differentiate them comparatively? Water. Large quantities as against little or no water. Heat. Overcooking, violent boiling versus a fast start with quick cooking, no violent boiling. Air. Open containers, loose fitting covers and stirring as opposed to covered utensils and no stirring. Is there any point in question? I believe this covers the problem clearly, Doctor. Now, some suggestions about the food we'll test. I'd recommend some of those among the most common usage. Uh, potatoes, carrots. We should include a green vegetable, preferably peas. And a stem or leafy one. Uh, any objections to broccoli? Well, we'll decide on those four. Potatoes, carrots, peas, broccoli. These are commonly in use in the home and are typical of vegetable classification. And so, in the ensuing weeks in preparing for the tests, Dr. Kimball's assistants cleaned and washed the food, just as it's done at home. Each sample of food used in cooking weighed exactly one pound. The common practice in many homes of covering the food with water for cooking was followed. It required one and one-half cups in the destructive method. For vitamized cooking, only one tablespoon of water was used, or one sixteenth of a cup. Both cooking operations were started simultaneously, with the heat turned on full. By the old-fashioned method, using a loose fitting cover, the peas were boiled until done. It required 24 minutes. In the case of protective cooking, started on high heat and permitted to come to a steam, the operation was completed on a simmer heat. The tight-fitting cover was never removed. 
The peas were also cooked until done, requiring 20 minutes. After cooking, each pan of peas was drained and the weight carefully checked and recorded. The same procedure was followed with the other three foods. Uniform samples of the raw, uncooked food were analyzed. These gave the total vitamin content before cooking and served as a basis for all comparison of vitamin loss in the two cooking methods. All samples were kept in an oxygen-free atmosphere to prevent vitamin loss through contact with air. All vitamin determinations were then conducted by chemical and microbiological procedures. Uniform samples of all foods cooked by the destructive method were studied, weighed, and analyzed with care and precision. The exact amount of vitamins remaining was determined minutely. The same procedure was followed with all uniform samples of vitamized cooking and the vitamin retention precisely measured. Using as a yardstick the vitamins provided by nature in the raw foods, the percentage of vitamin loss in the destructive method of cooking and the percentage of vitamin retention in vitamized cooking were scientifically determined. And what were the results of these months of painstaking tests? Remember, they were made with four commonly used types of food. Well, facts were revealed which are of tremendous importance in every American home. Suppose we listen as the amazing results are discussed. Well, our test certainly proved one thing. Vitamin values of cooked food served in the American home depend in a large part on the cooking methods used by the American housewife. Andrews, you recorded the concentrations of the vitamins A and C. What were the final results? In vitamin A, we found very little difference. 96 and one-tenth percent was saved in vitamized or protective cooking, and 94 percent in destructive cooking. As for vitamin C, vitamized cooking saved 76 and four-tenths percent, and only 58 and three-tenths percent was saved in improper cooking. Blake, you recorded concentrations of the vitamins of the B complex tested. How about final results? They were quite significant. Of B1, 94 and 4 tenths percent were saved in vitamized cooking and only 58 percent in destructive cooking. B2 resulted in a saving of 90 and 4 tenths percent uh, for vitamized cooking and 59 and 9 tenths percent for the destructive method. I have the results for retention of the vitamin PP, nicotinic acid. Uh, 97 and 5 tenths percent was retained in vitamized cooking, 61 and 3 tenths percent in destructive cooking. That gives an average retention for all vitamins tested of 91 percent in vitamized cooking and an average loss in destructive cooking of 33 and 7 tenths percent. Uh, with regard to minerals, our tests showed from 90% to 97% retention of calcium, phosphorus, and iron in vitamized cooking. Now that our records are completed, we have cause for thought even beyond those actual records. All this work has been done, of course, that we may discover the most effective way for man to be assured of getting the vitamins and minerals so essential to health. We are fairly safe in assuming that the results we obtained would be representative of all such foods cooked by the two methods we tested. It becomes then a subject of tremendous importance. By one method, there is a virtual blackout of one third of the essential vitamin ingredient. By the other method of cooking, less than one tenth is lost. Here is a subject vital to a healthy America. Now, how does all this affect the homemaker in her kitchen? She has no interest in homogenizing, titration, biology, or vitamin assays. She has a family to feed, and her problem is to keep that family healthy. We'll take Mrs. Smith again as an example. She has learned something from the work done by the great army of V-men. Mrs. Smith doesn't have to learn to cook all over again. Vitamized cooking is easily done. She needs only to follow four simple rules. First, cook vegetables in little or no water so that health-giving vitamins and minerals are not boiled out and poured down the sink. Secondly, start fast and cook quickly. The intense high heat brings vegetables to the steaming point quickly 
Their precious ingredients are not exposed to heat, water, and air any longer than necessary. Next, be sure heat is evenly distributed and accurately controlled. It keeps vegetables cooking gently, avoids violent boiling, which destroys vitamins. And lastly, cook in covered utensils without stirring to keep out vitamin-destroying air. These are the four simple rules of vitamized cooking. It will protect the vital, elusive ingredients in our daily food. It will help assure the American family, your family, the essential elements nature intended them to have. For it is not the bulk alone of what we eat that measures its health-giving values, but that small yet important group of vitamins and minerals. At play, at work, at duty, all America can be healthier if they will safeguard the benefits of natural foods. And an important way is by vitamized cooking. So profit by the research of that great army of V-men. Yes, a healthy America is a strong America.